So we have yes. to have a motion. So I no, make I'm... a motion. Oh, who wants to make a motion for Joe? Who wants to be the first? I motion uh, Joe uh, for chairman. Or chair. I second. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No objections? None. Lots of cheers. Yeah. <laughs> um, our steadfast no leader. What does this make, like 20, 21, 22 years, something like that, Joe? Yeah, we've been at it a long time. Long time. Long time. All right, next. Secretary. I'm drop. We, we got secretary? We got to do our motions for that. Jason okay. was first. He was... I second. All right, ready to vote? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Hey, Rich. Good to see you. Hi, Joe. How you doing? Okay, how you doing? All right. Well, I had trouble getting on, so I'm getting better. Yeah. Good to see All you. All right. Rich, we're ready to hear from you regarding the, the report that you just turned in, which I thought was very good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's another thing that's been going on for a long time. Um, yeah, so we had a lot of people that participated. We had one, one two, three, four, five, six, eight, like 15 or 20 visits in two months. Um, Cicely did a lot of them. Nick and Lori did a bunch of them. So I think we're in good shape for up till December. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah, no, no problems. Everything, everything looked good. Good. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Jason, uh, the playground and the fence installed and all that, what kind of do you have any questions or any comments? Uh, I reached out to Scott and I know you're you're here and somewhere in the shadows, but thank you, Scott. It looks great. Um, what you did with that fence, I never would have thought of doing. And uh, and I just think it came out really good. Um, you keep the kids out of the street. It went in quick and it looks it looks perfect. I, I, I agree with you. The, um, the, the new fence is perfect in height and it does the job it needs to do, and it just adds to the whole, the whole scene. It looks really, really good. Okay. Expansion of the parking lot. Have you, and Scott, have you and Scott talked at all about this since we left, Matt? <laughs> Jay, we kind of, we kind of talked. Um, I have a concept um, that I've developed, and I ran it by Rob uh, Russo in the engineering department and uh, I'll shout it out to everybody but basically what it is is right now the parking lot everybody is going in and parking at a 90 degree angle to to everything and what I'm looking at I've looked at some parking lot designs and if we go in from 79 and we create alleyways, we can park at 45s. So you're, di you know, you're going in on an angle and you'll have angle going off towards the trails, angle going off towards the center of the parking lot. You go up with a entryway going towards the parking lot and then you'll turn to the left and come back down the alleyway and you'll have parking to the left and parking to the right, all at 45 degree angles. So it's one way in, one way out and you're done. We need a hundred feet. We went up there, um, we have to nose in like we discussed at the playground opening um, but we do have enough width that we can get the 100 feet that we need. And um, we can work around that tree. Yeah, we'll lose a couple spaces. Um, uh, the ones where the picnic area, picnic tables are. So we can kind of work around that, but I think we can maximize the parking. We'll move the, move the portalettes um, to a different area. 
um, possibly towards the north end of the parking lot and the trailhead. Um, I haven't figured that one completely out yet. Um, or we keep them keep them both up by the playground um, and lose lose a couple uh, space there or so. Um, but that's what we're looking at, and I'm hoping to get highway help. Um, if not, my guys are more than capable. We just have to get our the equipment. Um, it's just materials to level off the lot, and then uh, develop the where I had originally thought we'd do just like a timber down on the ground um, in the center portion of the lot. I'm thinking that we'll do the timber post and rail similar to the stuff that is by the playground because those are, those are typically eight to 10 foot spaces. Big posts, so they more or less align the people. Oh, that's where I have to park. Um, we park between the big timbers and we will, with it, with the millings, we can go up and paint um, the diagonals and they'll hold up um, for, you know, a couple of weeks. We'll just go up and hit them again every couple of weeks. And so people know where they have to park. It'll be more or, like organized. And I think we can do it for a low cost. It's just going to be the timber post and rail. Um, and some material on the uh, west side of the parking lot as it falls off. But I think we'll be good. Scott, do you have an idea how many parking places you will have after you're finished? No, not yet. Okay. I, just, I just did the width and then we have to, I have to do the length. I hadn't okay. done that yet. But I think, I think we'll increase it. Um, and it'll be more organized because people are, yeah, they're doing their best, you know, because they pull in, but the diagonal is going to be easier to get out of um, right. instead of the 90 degree. So it, it takes up less space. Very good. Anybody have any add or question? So oh, just yeah. so I get it right. So, so, um, how many rows of cars will there be? Four. Four rows, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Just need to make the spaces long enough to accommodate a truck with a hitch rack on it. Yep. Because yep. that'll add like three feet onto it. Yeah, that, that needs to go into the calculations with the, with the parking guidelines that yeah. are established. Okay. Uh, That sounds wonderful. I'm I'm uh, grateful because I I don't I don't know where to start with that. So uh, <laughs> that sounds really creative, and um, I I can say just for, just by putting the lines in, I think you end up saving spaces because one guy parks at eight o'clock, you know, and then the guy parks next to him, and then that guy at eight o'clock leaves, and now there's a whole spot open because nobody, you know, you end up with like that half space in between because nobody really knows where to go. Right. So I think that's an improvement for sure, just doing that. Okay. Well, we know it's very popular, so we're going to need something to make it a little bigger. Is there, Jason, is there, what do you way, have? Is there, is there any way to make the, the lines more permanent than having to do it every two weeks? Well, it's paint. And well, there's millings. Yeah. So, I mean, they will hold the paint more than gravel. You know, because it doesn't the the surface doesn't move as much, right? <laughs> as we as we found out <laughs> when we were trying to spread them out <laughs> when they sat too long. Um, so I think I mean it might be more than two weeks, but right do now we do we do the surf club um, gravel lot, and that's like every three weeks or so during the summer. Yeah, that's a lot more, that's probably a lot more loose than. Uh, that, that's a process lot. Yeah. So, and you can still see it. So it, it doesn't kick out a lot if, especially in the, and we're at the surf club, we're at 90s. So there's a lot of turning action where with uh, a 45, you're pulling in 
so there's not a lot of steerage. Yeah, you probably won't even hit the line. Correct. Yeah. Hopefully, because yeah. <laughs> if you hit the line, you might hit the car next to you. <laughs> right. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully you don't have to do it that often. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a it's going to be an experiment. Yeah, um, for sure. Um, but I think it, I think it's worthwhile to try um, and hopefully it will make it more ex accessible for people on on the full full parking lot and not block people out and hopefully I know we're I know we're going to exceed our parking capacity you know on those big days but you know be it we have we have three other lots or two other lots that people can go to so you feel no matter how many spaces you put in sometimes yep how many yep. spaces do you think it will add I'm not Lori I'm not sure yet I okay. have to do the, I have to do the length and all those calculations. I was more concerned about the width mm -hmm. between 79 and the trails because I don't want to get all the way into that one trail. Sure, um, sure. So, I mean, if you look at the up by the up by the playground, there's the um, there's a little stand with a sign um, right past the. Uh, entrance to the playground. I took a measurement from there and went to 79 and I had the 100 feet. So, I mean, now we're not digging, not digging way into that trail. I mean, we're on the edge of it. So we may have to do some border, border containment um, for those that are on that, that uh, training trail. But I think we I think we can do it. We're gonna have to move some pine trees because I don't really want to cut them. I'd rather transplant them if we can. So good. All right, Jason, do you have something for us tonight for rules of the subcommittee? Sure. I I spoke with Tim and then I um, forwarded it to Rich. And honestly, we we kind of came to the conclusion that they're written pretty well um, with a lot of forethought when they were first created. Um, the only thing, well, there was, there was the name, but in the next document, it links back to um, Raymore becomes Rockland. The only thing that's confusing there is because on the sign, the actual physical sign, it talks about like Raymore and that sign is is really small, so I don't know who reads the sign. <laughs> the sign is at knee height at the 79 lot, and I, I think, I don't know if it's at Renee's, I think there is a sign, a sign with the regulations at, uh, at, at Renee's, but uh, it's not it's the kind the, of thing. Jason, it's at, Jason, at Renee's, it's right near the gate up high, about seven, eight feet up in the air. Oh, okay. On a tree. Okay. Yeah, I don't know who's going to read it. Um, and there are so many regulations. It might be hard to um, to make everything big and bold so that everyone reads them all. Um, what we have done is we put up a couple signs like uh, like the no e-bikes, um, and I believe there's one that says uh, don't ride at night. Um, or to our closes at dusk or whatever it is. I think maybe just pick the ones that we really want to enforce and make those stand out. Um, we did notice that there's no motorized use on the, the regs and that's good, but it might, it's not landing with e-bikers if that's something we want to really in insist on. I don't know if that's opening pin Pandora's box because we're we might be facing a population that might be even just growing into increasingly hard to to uh, con contain because there's just more selling. Um, the other the other thing was that uh, uh, Rich mentioned that um, there is 
I think there's a line about no altering, and, and I have an email from Rich where he looked at the regulation, um, the, the physical um, surfaces or the trees, and he wanted to specifically say, or rocks, because there was the graffiti on the rock a few times, yeah, just to, yeah. to clarify. Um, I think though, when you look at the entirety of what was written, it, it, it covers most of it um, with pretty good detail of what we need. Tim and I, we, we kind of went on with this a little bit and then at that point of realizing that it pretty much covers what we need to, it's really then about enforcement. And given that there's so many people up there, the question is, is there a need or a desire to, to have someone up there at times or more frequently monitoring? And I guess that's just an open question. Um, there are just some, you know, the use is so high and you compare that with other um, town parks, you see, you know, rangers in different places or, or whoever it is for any reason. Um, I wonder if, if that's something we might want to look into, if having a presence there would help anything. And also, we, we were mentioning that uh, whatever the, um, the, the fine was, if it was $100, um, I think, or 125 or something, that seemed like it wasn't much of a, a consequence. And there, I don't know that it's ever been enforced anyways. Um, but I think that uh, the, the, the amendments or changes that we would recommend are, are pretty, pretty small in scope. And uh, most of what we would hope is there is already there. Okay. Can you um, send, that, send to me and to send to others what you have right now on printed out? Sure. And then we can maybe talk a little bit next at the next meeting uh, in terms of are there some things that we need to have highlighted so that people, these are the, the things that there are biggest violations. So let's crack down on those. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. What all right. You, what, next, what do you what do you all think about enforcement? I can chime in on that. <laughs> um, it, what we need to do is if we're going to be modifying ordinances, um, which um, all of Rockland is basically covered under, um, we're going to have to go to the board of selectmen um, to change the ordinance and in any of those rules that we have, we, they have to be vetted through the Board of Selectmen for follow through and enforcement. Um, levying fines, I would bring in the police department to figure out what, what a fair, fair penalty is, um, but it's, a, we, it's not, it's not something that we can just throw up and say, this is what it's gonna cost. It has to be fully vetted through the Board of Selectmen. Um, okay. And we are in the process, I believe of the charter revision. Um, so if anything um, regarding our, the charge of the advisory committee, um, wants to be changed, we should make those recommendations to the Charter Review Commission or committee um, because that that's done every 10 years. And obviously we've grown immensely since the inception of the, the park or not even the park, the preserve. Um, so we just have to be uh, mindful of that and get changes in in a timely fashion. Do we have do we have a time limit on when we can get those in? Sounds um, like well, the charter. I think the charter review committee was established, and they're starting to work. So I would look at those. The how were created in the charter, 
and then pick the one, pick the battle that you want to try to improve upon. Uh, we made a lot of steps. We got rid of a lot of the four wheel drives and people dumping cars in Cone Pond and everything else. We've had a lot of cleanup and a lot of progress, but if we want to mandate um, rules and regulations, we have to get that out in the, in the forefront. Not necessarily for the charter, um, but for their, um, but for the town ordinances. So there's two kind of two sections. You have the charter and then you have the town ordinances and the town ordinances under parks and recreation covers um, Rockland, it covers, well, Braemar Rockland, and we should probably just say, okay, it's Rockland um, Preserve and Bower and the other parks. And these are the specific rules and infractions, prohibited activities, and those that are requiring a permit. Do the do the rules have to be the same for every nope. park? No, no, you you can you can be specific. Um, like it, we in town, we're supposed to be all dogs are supposed to be on leash, um, and we have seen how many that doesn't appear adhere to um, in a lot of areas. So um, we just had, I think we could be specific with, okay, Rockland preserve um, rules and regulations like we have no hunting. We have, and that's part of the charge or the, that are in the ordinances when it was established. So we just have to kind of bring those again to the forefront, forefront that it's posted as no hunting. And, you know, we can add in no e-bikes if we're gonna do it. We have in there no motorized vehicles um, except service vehicles, which would mean police department if they were going to start their ATV patrols again, or our, our equipment being up and within the preserve to maintain it. So just it's food for thought, um, but we should probably be looking at those as a, as a subcommittee or whatever, um, tear them apart, put them back together again and make a recommendation to the selectmen. So Do you know what our timing is on that? I'll just um, well, the charter, the charter uh, ordinances can be changed that they aren't timed. We can present, this is, this is the change that we would like to do. It has to go to the Board of Selectmen. They would set a public hearing on the change and then there would be a vote by the, by the town, town meeting. Um, but the charter is a little bit more critical. If you see anything in the charter relative to Rockland Braymore that you feel that should be cleared up or changed, now's the time to do it. Is that, is the charter online? Yes, it should okay. be. <laughs> it, hopefully it is, Tim. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we're ready to talk about pump track and dead trees. Um, do we have a schedule for removal of those trees that have been ribboned? Um, you want me to go, Jason? <laughs> you got your head, hand over your head. Um, yeah, I, you know more than I do, that's for sure. No problem. Um, we have been graciously, um, we're accepting it graciously that Charlie Islin is donating, will be donating his time to uh, come in with equipment and take down the trees and in, in the pump track. Um, my staff will be cutting and chipping and removing uh, once he drops them. So I do not have a time frame. It's whenever he can fit it in, he's gonna be bringing in a spider 
uh, within the pump track. So we shouldn't be damaging any fencing and we'll have it have it out of there whenever his time schedule permits. Oh, that sounds very, that sounds good. Very good. How do you spell Charlie's last name? Yeah, you would have to ask that, Lori. <laughs> well, if I, you want the minutes I, to I, be I, right. <laughs> I-E-S-L-I-N. L-I-N? L-A-N? L-I-N. Okay. I-E-S-L-I-N. It's Island Tree. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. The next is um, the Invasives and Dave Roach and uh, Cone Pond. I met with um, Dave Roach yesterday with his um, a couple members of his crew. Um, they have submitted to us today. Um, Scott, you have a copy also, right? Correct. Okay. And um, we, we separated the two issues, the north, um, the north side of Cone Pond, where the autumn olive is there, the multi, multi-flowered rose is in there, the tree of heaven is there, and there's something else as well. And uh, we have a quote of about $4,800 to do the entire project. Ooh, um, great. And um, so I think that that's a, and I also mentioned, Cecily, about the, um, the uh, Collier Garden that you're Pine. interested in putting in that area. Yeah. And they will, they will mark an area that they feel will be the best for growth. So right. we're finished. Yeah, we'll no, be, I can imagine. Good. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Great. So, um, and it, it's possible that this would all start um, before the leaves come out this spring. Perfect. Scott I, think, Scott, I think only thing we need here is for you to give them the okay. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Dave because I think, um, I mean, they have some um, things in here for like November of 21 is brush cutting and um, and things that I think if I if I talk to Dave personally to see if we can tag team with my crew I mean because we have brush hog uh, brush hog and stuff like that so um, to see if we can cut that down a little bit right because um, his his stuff is all starting for that area is starting in April. Yeah, be April April to May yeah. would be the her, the herbicide application. Yep, and then the follow-up is July, August, and then the brush brush cutting, and I don't even know what it, refu, refugium piles? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's basically- <laughs> Is in November. Right, it's basically stacking the, the stuff that's been cut so that yeah it can be used as a, a hideaway for small animals. Gotcha. I mean, I think, okay. I think it's, it, it's completely doable, um, you know, budgetarily with him because it's broken down um, in, in sections. So it's a smaller bite um, right. as far as the budget. So, I mean, Dave's been great for, with Salt Meadow and everything else. So I have no, hesitation of working with them at all it's just it's just timing and if we can if town resources can help them or not um we'll find out okay question um that's that's fantastic that they would uh, it would first of all that it's all going to get removed um professionally that's wonderful because it's a huge huge job um do you know what herbicide they're using my concern is the toxicity and especially he's, he's, if- um, Cecily, Dave's very, very cautious about that um, regarding near water and all that kind of okay. thing. So That's he's, he's good, probably good the, the, the person I would trust the most with something like that. Okay. He's been in the business for a long time. So so does he have, have a company? To... Yes, yeah, it's it's all his own all- company. All, all habitat, habitat. All habitat all ha- services. Okay. Yeah. We. I also asked him 
I also asked Steve and his, and his folks there with him to look across at the, um, on the south side of the pond, the Phragmites that's been growing yeah. back. And uh, he, he noted it and he said that, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not, it's growing thin and it, it does, it is growing, but it's growing what he would say on the slow side. So what Good. we basically decided was we take care of the north side this year and work on the other next year. We can't do both at the same time. So it's not that we're forgetting about it. It's just that we're putting it off for a little while. And, that, and in, if, I, if I can, Joe, I'll call out um, on, on Dave's proposal um, to, to help with your answer, Cecily. It, um, he states, we offer a series of customized management prescriptions selected from the suite of available tools and application techniques, which will be integrated in the most effective methods to ensure successful vegetation management program for these species. All herbicide applications will be conducted by our OSHA 10 certified commercial herbicide applicator, uh, applicators licensed by the state of Connecticut, Department of Energy and Environmental Protection and in accordance with all local and state guidelines. So, I mean, he, he goes on to explain what he would be putting down if you're interested in reading. I, yeah, I really would be. I would be. Unfortunately, our government approved stuff, still approved stuff is pretty horrible, but you know, I saying mean, there's, a, there's he's really been, a better he's alternative. Been, he has been very, very accurate with stuff that we've been using down at um, Salt Meadow okay. environmentally. Good. Um, that's good. That's, so I don't that's really have any reassuring. concerns, but I, okay. I can, I can send you um, his proposal. I'd love it, that. It, that would be great. Yeah. I'd got. just be interested. Absolutely. Sure. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, Cecily, we're at the point in the agenda here where you had added something regarding yeah. the Rockwood Preserve Forest and their, and their condition. Yeah. So um, we've had some troubling observations um, throughout Rockland and, and the surrounding area, really north of the circle. I've been noticing, especially after rain, you can see that a huge number of trees have lichen on them. And it's not just old trees, a lot of young trees as well. And um, I've also, I believe that there are a lot of additional disease signs, you know, dying limbs and so forth. And I did a little research. First of all, I'm a lay person here. I'm, I'm not an arborist. Um, but what my research says about lichen, the good news is that the lichen it's, itself is not harming trees. But the bad news is if the tree suddenly has the lichen on it, it's probably already in decline because lichen is rarely found on healthy, vigorous trees. Um, the deal is that lichen loves sunlight so that, and it loves moisture so that um, it's found in sunny and wet spots. So if a tree has a sudden loss of leaves or branches, more light gets to the surface where the lichen is. And that's what's, what's going. So basically presence of lichen points, could point to an unhealthy or dying tree. Um, and there might be a variety of reasons for that, but it's just very alarming when I see it, <laughs> trees all around my house, all over the neighborhood, all over Rockland. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to, to bring that up. It's, um, I know we've got a lot of stressors. Gypsy moth uh, has been there. It's been not so bad in the last couple of years, but before that, um, ash borer, we've had drought. Um, you know, it, there's also jumping worms. That's a whole other thing that's, that's really frightening um, that may be there. And, um, Anyway, just kind of wanted to, to bring that up, see what you guys uh, may have seen as well. Um, 
you know, certainly if, if there is a problem with the health of our trees, we've got increasing danger of falling branches for on hikers and bikers who are using Rockland, um, especially in high wind conditions. Um, we're looking at a lot more cleanup and we need to do a lot more monitoring and removal of dead limbs to keep the bike park tracks, outdoor classroom, heavily used areas, you know, safe. Um, and, you know, longer term, of course, I hate to think, you know, what our forest could be like in 10 or 20 years. Um, a lot of obviously loss of uh, habitat, too dangerous. And um, now we got oxygen problems, don't we? If it's, if it's, if it's right, widespread, it's really terrifying. But anyway, just, you know, wanted to throw it out to all of us here and to think about, you know, I don't know who we have expertise, you know, what kind of expertise we have among us, maybe get an arborist in to assess, you know, is this serious or not? What could we potentially do about it if there is some, you know, real concern over disease? Um, that, that's what I have. Yeah, let, Cecily, let me just jump in for a moment here. Um, yeah. I was, I was just recently at a Madison Land Trust meeting which I'm a, one of the directors, and they had a presentation uh, called the Young Forest Initiative or the Young Forest Program. And they're pushing for, this particular program is pushing for the woodcock bird and for, believe it or not, bunny rabbits. And um, the, um, it's, a, it's a biologist and, and she is looking for areas where they go in and they um, work on an area of four or five acres, open up the area a bit so that trees, new trees can come in. Because what they're saying is that there are a lot of old forests and that we need to get younger ones started. And the younger ones mixing with the older ones help bring in the wildlife that we mm -hmm. so mostly de definitely need. Yeah. Um, the lady that, that gave this presentation, the name is Lisa Whaley. And um, apparently I worked with her back in 1978 at Chatfield Hollow. Okay. <laughs> she remembers me, but I don't uh. quite remember her. But anyways, I will get in, I will get in touch with her sometime okay. this spring and try to set up a time that you and any other members of the committee would like to join and we can yeah. walk with her. She also has a forester that she works very closely with. So what she doesn't know, he knows. Wow, and fantastic, yeah. Idea. yeah. And they can give us an idea about some of the things that you just brought up, but they can also give us an idea of, do we have a spot that would, if some work was done on it, would it bring in new wildlife that we don't have at the present time? Fantastic, so yeah. Yeah, so I, I have an idea for a spot too because um, again, it's 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 a bit into the woods north of the pond, but um, the gypsy moth particularly took over there and has really already done away with some of the older trees quite a bit. Yeah. So anyway, I love that, Joe. That's great. I'd love to meet with her. Okay, one of the things that we we have and have had for probably 30, 40 years at Rockland is when trees get snapped off many times by a hurricane wind. We see that the tree inside has been deeply rutted up by either uh, carpenter ants or termites or whatever. So we have that as a problem with some of our bigger oak trees. So mm -hmm. the tree looks healthy until it snaps off and we find that the heart of the tree has been destroyed. So we may be bringing somebody in might help us in terms of what we should be trying to work on. So That'd I'll try to get her this. I'll try to get her this spring. Fantastic. Okay. Um, is there any other agenda items that need to be discussed tonight? Yeah, I, I'd love to say a few words on that whole uh, pollinator garden idea on the north side of okay. the pond. That last item yep. there. Very so, good. So yeah. So 
last February, I attended a lecture at North Brantford Library. It was about the Pollinator Pathway Program. This is a, a, a huge um, regional program in the Northeast. And I think it extends beyond that as well. Um, the idea is to create um, pollinator, continuous pollinator gardens. Um, our habitats are so fragmented right now, and we all know how pollinators are struggling. And a huge part of that is that um, we're not supporting them. Um, we, so many of our gardens um, have very limited species that are not native. And all of these insects have evolved to, um, to eat highly specific um, vegetation. And so the idea with the pollinator plant pathways is to use native plants without pesticides that obviously damage those pollinators. Um, and to make sure that those plants, there, there's a selection of plants that support them at each stage um, when they're in their larval stage, as well as when they're mature. And to also not just have a variety of plants, but to make sure there's a succession of plants starting very, very early in the spring with the early bloomers, middle of the summer, very late bloomers. And so that there is host plant and food throughout all the stages of the insect, the pollinator's life. Um, but also in the winter too, you've got seeds, you've got berries, and obviously it provides habitat for other wildlife as well, birds and, and such. Um, so I learned about this and it's something that um, my partner Rich and I created in our yard last summer. Um, that's how we kept busy during this whole crisis with, the, with COVID. And um, as I was in Rockland, as I am so often, um, that north side of the pond where we were talking about all those invasives. And I was thinking, wow, you know, all those invasives need to go. I know, Dave, you've been working on that. And well, what's going to go there? The whole reason the invasives came in is because it was highly disturbed land. And so once we remove those invasives, what a perfect spot for restoring the native habitat there, making sure that when those invasives are gone, we put in things that will take hold and maintain and sustain the, you know, our, our native uh, wildlife. Um, so that's what I'd, I'd love to see. I mean, it's a perfect spot. We've got sun there. We've got access to water. And um, so, you know, once, once those invasives are gone, I could see, you know, starting to get those in. And, I, and this would not be formal. This would be a very naturalized type garden. I think it would be an intensive effort in the first couple of years to get it established. But then it, you know, it's a matter of maintaining, making sure that the invasives don't come back and, you know, keeping them out. But hopefully it would just, you know, take on a, a life of its own. Um, And what I'd ultimately love to see is, is to extend that habitat, that native habitat toward the pond. And when those Phragmites are gone to start getting um, native pond plants. And I could see, you know, I would love to see an amazing thriving ecosystem, not just, you know, all the insects and pollinators, but a diversity of birds that are supported. And, you know, who knows, fish in the pond, we've got a lot of frogs there already. It's incredible but to keep supporting that. Um, it would be a place of beauty and uh, I think pretty cool. I guess, uh, you know, my vision would be, you know, as they say, it, it's a bit of work to begin with, but um, I think this could be quite a communal effort. You know, I could see in involving, inviting people that are in the surrounding North Madison area, anyone in Madison could take part, um, you know, maybe encourage some Girl Scout groups, Boy Scouts. Um, I feel like people are really hungry to be part of a group. I think it can be done in a COVID safe manner, quite COVID safe. Um, and, you know, a chance to, for us all to get together and create some good. Um, and I'd be really excited about it. Wondered how you guys felt. What do you think? 
Cecily, what kind of plants are they that you? Uh, well, primarily wildflowers. I mean, yeah. people are, they're selling them in garden shops, but the reality is I'm seeing them all the time in the wild and I've been collecting seeds and stuff. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a variety of ways you can do it. I did a lot of starting by seed that can take a little longer. I've also purchased, you know, um, native plants from garden shops. There are a number, more and more garden shops are doing that and uh, supporting, you know, offering native items. Are they pretty hardy? Extremely. Well, okay. you know, I think that, uh, yeah, exactly. They're very, they, they're, they evolved to live right here, you know? Um, I think what is difficult is that it often gets squeezed out by invasives, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, and, and, and pesticides and herbicides, and that's why I was asking about, you know, what Dave Roach uses. A lot of, usually those um, dissipate, they, even if they are initially toxic, but did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, also, you know, hey, I got to say I'm a lay person too, so I really learned a lot last summer, but I would want to try to engage, uh, you know, try to find some master gardeners who are in the community who would be willing to be part of this, maybe engage someone from the, you know, Madison Garden Club, um, someone, you know, who's been doing, uh, has had gardens like this in their own yard, so, yeah. So Especially, I was just going to say, oh, this ahead. is something that Nick and I actively pursue in our own garden, yeah. um, you know, to ensure that we have, um, you know, a variety of flowers throughout the season to, I mean, and in, in even this year, the last couple of years we've been um, raising and then releasing, you know, the, the uh, monarch butterflies. They're in oh, me the too. Yeah. We, yeah. You know, we released yeah. about 80 this year. So oh, I did um, 50. I had no idea you were doing it too. Yeah, yeah, cool. we are. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I think that in general, there's been a whole movement away from having um, a lot of flowers and various types of plants in your garden and having garden beds that support this because yeah. it can take a lot of, of time and energy and people want to put in gardens and plant something that they don't have to take care of. So, uh, you know, I guess we need to start thinking more about, you know, helping that along in our, in our neighborhood and in our habitat here. But, um, you know, I think it would be interesting. I've worked with uh, the Middlesex Garden Club. Mm. They have a host of people who, um, uh, you know, uh, work with, with the flowers and the plants, but also um, Sousa, Sousa, Sousa. Um, yeah, yeah is a master gardener. So okay, she Michelle be, Daniels, you mean? Michelle huh? Daniels? Yeah. She, Scott's mom? Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's great. Yeah, I see. I yeah. think there's so many people around right here, you know, that we could just tap into and invite right. to be part of it. And yeah, good. Yeah. You could, add, you could also approach the Madison Garden Club. Yeah, absolutely. And, and yep. then there's an ecology club uh, at and the high school yeah so. absolutely Cecily so, one of the, yeah Cecily one of the things that I um, gained from my walk with with Dave Roach yesterday was that he was looking and seeing those huge piles of dirt that are right along the right the there and he said that's peat he says that's oh. perfect soil and what we uh -oh. need to do is once we Cut get everything else cut away that we yeah. don't want and root yeah. it out, that spread mm. is spread over the area. And you That'd now be amazing. Have yeah. And then you have something great to grow with. Right. So it'll be good for, for a garden. So what I'm what I'm saying here really is is that we need to work with Dave Roach. Totally. And also yeah. to find out when we can start doing some of the things we want to put in there as new, but at yep. the same time, not doing it too soon. No, so that is right. going to be his way and it wouldn't you have know, to work be with him. Point. Right. So Absolutely. I think it's a, you know, it's a year to two year, three year project, totally. but it's a great one. 
And it would be nice to have like a show place going down that north side along the pond so uh -huh. that people, because that's the part of the pond that was dug out and deepened and has always got water in it. Whereas the south side dries up because there's right. nothing over there to hold the water in its place. Right. So, so I think we got a great thing there. And, you know, we just need to work with everybody. And I've heard tonight, like other organizations that would probably love to be working with us. Now, the other thing I just recently picked up was that the Regional Water Authority at 90 uh, Frontage Road, I think, in New Haven, right near the about Long Island Sound, the Regional Water, they're going to put in their own polyator garden this year. Really? So, yeah. So there's somebody else that you might be able to pick up some ideas from. I'm sorry, or, there was water company. Who was that? The Regional Water Authority in New Haven. Gotcha. Right here, Just give me a sec. Uh, My Jordan battery's Saturday. running out. Rich, could I have a cord? Because my phone's going to conk out in a second. I'm about to lose electricity and then I'll lose my internet connection. So <laughs> my guy's coming over hopefully with some electricity. <laughs> anyway, um, so basically I wanted to throw out the idea and see if, you know, any, if anyone's interested in being part of the subcommittee, I'm glad to spearhead. And I believe it'll be a much bigger than our committee itself. But is anyone interested in uh, being part of the master planning kind of thing? Um, I, I just think it's a great idea. I'd love to help. I don't think I, I want to volunteer to be on a committee. Um, okay. I'd, but I'd love to be there and support and put some hard work into it. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. And um, is it, it would it be possible uh, as needed to open up to, you know, people outside this committee who might be interested in, in working on it? Yeah, and I just I just caution until we have the area cleared up a bit. I understand. It's, it's, I, yeah, it's about planning. Yeah. 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 It's too soon to bring them out there. Oh, of course. Um, I get that. But, okay. Good. All right. Is there anything else we need to discuss tonight? I have one question. Um, I didn't I don't think I reported it or Nick reported it on our on any of our um, submissions, but um, a few weeks back, there was a tree that was down over the bridge by the um, charcoal pit, the charcoal site okay. yeah. that needs a chainsaw. And, like there are a couple trees, you know, like a larger one came down in a, in a smaller one and it's across the, uh, you know, across the bridge. You can get around, yep. you know, get sort of get over it, but that'll need some tending to. Okay. Very good. I have decided that we've just about covered most of the things that are on our goals and projects for 2021. So I'm going to, rather than spend more time on that, I'm just going to leave that tonight and I'll send you some notes on it so that you all have information about the goals and projects for 2021. A couple of things that I would like to share with you is that um, the um, the neighbor at <clears throat> Renee's Way parking lot, who has his own landscaping business, um, he spoke with me the, about a week or two ago, and I guess he's in the plans of moving his business someplace else. So, and I think the town official got to him because he has done a wonderful job cleaning up the mess. Mm -hmm. It looks really great. And um, he also asked me, this is the young man, um, if um, the town would be willing to put some boundary markers up so that he knows where his line is versus our line. Um, so I think that that's something that um, would help everybody in that situation. The other thing is I asked Scott um, maybe a month ago about the memory benches that were being made for the playground area and the town has them. They're here, they're complete. 
and they will be put out this spring once we get through the winter months. So that's a good, that's a good, good thing. And um, the last thing I think I have is I was out there this week and I noticed this van and there were two women and I looked at closer and there was Rhode Island plates on it. She opened up the back of her van and she had put in a bed on the top part of it. And so, and on the bottom part, she had two mountain bikes so she can travel any place she wants and go biking wherever. And um, her friend was with her and they just love uh, coming to Rockland and they've been biking there. Uh, this is a second or third time. Nice. What I'm finding is that uh, the work that has been done, whether it's a hiker, a biker or someone for nature, um, there is a lot of appreciation of people uh, from what has been done by everyone that has worked there at Rockland. So um, we've done a good thing and the word has gotten out and people uh, are being very respectful. I don't see a mess in the woods when you go in from Rockland from up near uh, Cone Pond. Um, there is a little bit of trash I see that I pick up once in a while down on Route 79. And I think that's just the way it is. Anybody have anything else for tonight? Well, it's quiet, so everybody's either asleep or it's time to say, let's go and shut things down. I'm sorry I had so much trouble with my my getting on tonight. I still don't understand why. And I still don't know how I got on my phone, but I, I'm not going to complain about that. So uh, our next meeting will be, what, in March? Um, the schedule list should have the date. And we'll be back to a Monday night. Any last word from anybody? 